The principal animals inhabiting the African jungle are moose, elks, and knights of Pythias. Of course, you all know what a moose is. That's big game. First day, I shot two bucks. That was the biggest game we had. Don't step on those few laughs I have. Captain, tell what? me. What? Where are I? Oh, you're Did still you here? Did you meet any wild boar? Not until I saw you. Oh. America's most beautiful compact, smartest cigarette cases, magic action lighters, most beautiful dresser sets presents Groucho Marx in the Elgin American show, You Bet Your Life. And here's that sterling Elgin American, the one, the only... What a ridiculous name. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. Comme on le voit, en 1965, la carrière des Marx Brothers est loin d'être finie. Elle se poursuit à la télévision qui entretient leur légende plus vivante que jamais. Hello, folks, and welcome to You Bet Your Life. Hello. Hello. Uh, if you? one of you says the secret word, he wins a 16 millimeter Apollo Sound movie projector. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Evelyn uh, Fredrickson, is that right? That's right. Miss uh, Evelyn Miss, Fredrickson? That's right. Thanks for that. You're the car hop, huh? Yes, I am. I knew it. My headlights started flashing the minute you walked in. <laughs> Where are you from, Miss uh, Fredrickson? Uh, I'm from Shannon's on Pico and Sepulveda. Shannon's, uh... Shannon's Drive-In. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. How are the hamburgers, eh? They're terrific. Mm -hmm. Well, if they're anything like the car house, uh, Mr. St uh, Steins? Larry Steins? Larry Steins. Mm -hmm. You're the husband? Yes, I am, sir. Mm -hmm. How long have you been married to Evelyn? <laughs> oh, that, that isn't my wife. <laughs> well, don't come and run into me with your troubles. I... <laughs> Are you married? Yes, I am. You have any kids? Three and I think four pretty soon. <laughs> when were you home last? Huh? <laughs> Larry, what sort of work do you do? Uh... Well, I was teaching people how to drive. <laughs> Was your car wrecked? How long did it last, Larry? A week and a half. How'd you lose your job? Well, I was teaching someone how to drive, and I got a ticket for giving the wrong signal. My, my, my hunch is you've done a lot of teaching around this town. <laughs> Anything unusual uh, happen around your place? You mean beside the kids? Or... <laughs> oh, you, you must have had an, an, an eventful life. Uh, what's well, your most unusual story, Larry? Well, I, I had a lot of jobs. I never seemed to keep any of them too long. Well, if you keep putting out the wrong hand, I can understand why. The most unusual thing, I was selling vacuum cleaners for a little while. And uh, I, I sort of developed a system. I thought it was pretty smart. I'd leave the machine out in the car, the new machine, and go in and demonstrate with, a, with their old one, because if you walk up to the house with a machine, they throw you out. They slam the door in your face. And uh, it's when I lost my job, because I was in the house demonstrating without a cleaner and her husband came home and <laughs> what did the husband say when you saw you demonstrating without a cleaner <laughs> Was he amused by this? Or? I didn't give him much chance to say or be amused at all. I, I thought I'd better leave. <laughs>
You've always said that Chico was the most interesting of the brothers. I've heard you say oh, that. Oh, yes. He had a brilliant mind, Chico. If Chico had gone into mathematics or something, he would have been at one someplace in New England, you know, in one of those. MIT or something. MIT or one of those. MIT, T-I-M, <laughs> M-I-S-S-R. without any money. So somebody asked Chico how much money he lost gambling. And Chico says, you find out how much Harpo has. That's how much I lost gambling. He didn't have any money when he died. But he had a hell of a fun one life. Yeah. Probably had more fun than all of us put together. Because I was always kind of serious. And so was Harpo when they come to work. Just, where's Hoppo? Where's Hoppo? Hoppo! 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 Harpo! Where have you been? I'm... Now stop that, Hoppo. Where have you been? I just announced you wanted you to. You've been backstage? Backstage. Right? Yeah. Can you get me one, too? <laughs> Oh, come on, I asked you to play the harp. Will you play the harp? You won't play the harp? You don't want it? Why? Mm -hmm. Want to play another instrument? <laughs> this is yours? Yours? You invented this? Oh, good. It's very peculiar. Fine. It's got two mouthpieces, huh? You play in both sides at the same time? <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> Now listen, would you please do me a favor and I'd like you to play the harp. Would you play the harp? You don't want to play the harp? Do you have another instrument to play? Oh, I'll wait, I'll wait. What are you gonna get? Oh god, you're gonna get the clarinet. I didn't know he played. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to watch Harpo play the clarinet. He's really one of the greatest. <laughs> you gonna play the clarinet? Not seriously. What are you gonna play? What are you gonna play? Asking me to sing? Well, I was. I thought I might entice you because you have so many great songs. I love songs to sing, there. really. Say, I've had. Lydia, great. Lydia, I have to drop the cigar until I come back and keep your filthy hands off. It. <laughs> All right, I'm not used to this. <laughs> this is a song from a picture called uh, "A Day at the Circus," which we did at MGM. Right. And uh, I sang this in a Pullman car. But... <laughs> now, why are you applauding a Pullman car? Yeah, what is... <laughs> there aren't any more Pullman cars. <laughs> anyway, we, in this picture, we had a gorilla. It wasn't actually a gorilla. It was a gorilla skin with a man inside of it. Sure. And uh, he had a manager. This gorilla skin had a manager. <laughs> this is true. And we engaged him to bring the pelt over to the studio. Mm -hmm. And then we engaged a man to go inside of the gorilla skin. And he also had a manager. So we had two managers there for one gorilla. <laughs> and this, this skin was awfully hot, you know, with all the lights. And it was in the summer, we're doing this scene. And during, uh, during lunchtime, 
the fellow who was in the skin, he went over to the lunchroom and he got an ice pick and he bought about 40 holes in this uh, gorilla skin. And when he came back, he was very comfortable inside of this uh, skin. But the manager got wind of this, the manager of the skin. <laughs> and he was in a rage. And he says, oh, we're not going to permit this. And he says, give me my skin. Get that guy out of there. And he threw the pelt over his shoulder and walked out of the studio. Now, we had about three more scenes to do with the gorilla, but we had no skin. <laughs> so we had six people from MGM rushing around San Diego and all around that section of California looking for another monkey. <laughs> we needed a, another gorilla, but we couldn't get one. We got an orangutan, <laughs> which is only the, as half the size of a gorilla. Did right. you know that? I, no, but I do no. now, and I'm glad. And then we had to get a major. <laughs> We had to get a midget to go in this, in this orangutan skin. Yes, and then what? And then we got hundreds of letters when the picture come out from fans who said, we don't understand it. The gorilla was this high. <laughs> and it was only this high in the second half. And we never told them that we had had a, a, an orangutan with a midget in it. <laughs> I have a month off next August. What for? Well, you see, I just got a word from my lawyer. He got me a divorce. And one month every year, I win at the custody of my wife's parents. Perhaps you'll think I'm forward. But last night, when I first saw you... And slammed the door in my face. I realized that you're the man I've been dreaming of. What do you eat before you go to bed? Encyclopedia, oh Lydia, the queen of tattoo. On her back is the Battle of Waterloo, beside it the wreck of the Hesperus, too. And proudly above waves the red, white, and blue. You can learn a lot from Lydia. When a robe is in fail, she will show you the world If you'll step up and tell her where For a dime you can see Kankakee or Paris Or Washington crossing the Delaware <laughs> Lady, 